Okay, in this video we're going to look at how to draw box plots. Uh, box plots are sometimes called box and whisker diagrams, but they both mean exactly the same thing. Okay, a box plot shows five different pieces of information. So it shows the lowest value, it shows the lower quartile, it shows the median, it shows the upper quartile, and it shows the highest value. Also, other things can be worked out from it really easily. For instance, you can work out the range really easily by taking the lowest from the highest. So this would be the range from here to here. Uh, the interquartile range can be worked out really easily. So the interquartile range is worked out by taking the lower quartile away from the upper quartile, and I give you the interquartile range. Also, it's quite neat because you can sort of see 25% of the information. So for instance, this would be 25% of the data. This would represent the next 25% the next 25% and the next 25%. So each section represents 25% of the information. So for instance, from here to here would represent the bottom 50% of the information. From here to here would represent the, the top 50% of the information. And from here to here, the interquartile range represents the middle 50% of the data. Okay, uh, let's then look at how to draw box, uh, box and whisker box plots. Okay, so here we've got a question which asks, us, uh, which asks us to draw a box plot. And it gives us the minimum, 8, the lower quartile, 23, the median, 25, the upper quartile, 33, and the maximum, 42. So what I've done is I've drawn a line for the minimum at 8. I've drawn a line for the maximum at 42. I've drawn a line for the lower quartile at 23. I'm making sure that you know exactly where 23 is. So that's 21, 22, 23. Uh, we, the, there's a line for the median at 25 and a line for the maximum at, or the upper quartile at uh, 33 along with the maximum there at 42. I've made sure that those lines are exactly the same um, length as each other. So I've sort of made sure that they, all those five lines are the same length. I've then joined up the lower quartile, the median, and the upper quartile in this box shape. And I've drawn my two whiskers out to the lowest and to the highest, so the maximum values, like so. So that's how you draw a box and whisker diagram or box plot. Okay, we're now going to interpret a box plot. So here we've got a box plot, and it's for uh, Mr. Green's measured the height of each tomato in his greenhouse, and he's drawn his results in a box plot. So you've got here the lowest value, there the lower quartile. The, uh, there the median, the upper quartile, and the highest value there. And also you just need to make sure you know what the scale is. So you've gone from 10 to 11, that would be 10.5. So each one of them is 0.1. So you've got 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, and so on. Okay, the question says write down the median. So that's 13, it's 1, 2 across, that's going to be 13.1, 13.2. So that would be there, 13.2. The next one then said work, work out the inter, uh, the next one says work out the interquartile range. So the interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So the upper quartile is here and the lower quartile is here. So you just need to uh, write down what those two values are and subtract them. So this would be 13.5678. So that's 13.8. So 13.8 subtract. Uh, we've got 12.6. And if you subtract those from each other, you're going to get 1.2. So the interquartile range is 1.2 centimetres. That means that the middle 50%, the spread of them is 1.2. And the last part of that question says, explain why the interquartile range uh, may be a better uh, measure spread than the range. Well, the range is affected massively by outliers because you're including every single value in this uh, set of, in this box plot. Every single value is represented in it. The whiskers can sometimes be quite long. So for instance, if you suddenly had a plant which was 25 centimetres, the line would carry on all the way along to 25 for that one plant. And then whenever you take away the lowest value, it's going to give you this massive range. Well, quite a large range. Okay. Whereas the interquartile range represents just the middle 50% of the data. Okay. So it's much more reliable um, in terms of comparing them because they're not affected by outliers as much. Okay. So explain why the interquartile range may be a better measure spread than the range. The interquartile range, interquartile range, please use proper words. Um, the interquartile range is not affected by outliers. Okay, so in other words, if you've got an anonymous, anonymous result or an outlier, it's going to affect the range, but the interquartile range wouldn't be affected by it. So that's why the interquartile range may be a better measure of spread.